We got one here from Quinn Henry. South Korea is a cyberpunk dystopia. Interesting. Time. I've always found it odd how the cyberpunk genre seemed to have a strange obsession with Japan. All across these movies, you'll find Japanese text, culture, and characters. But this actually makes sense. These movies date back to the 1980s, a time period where the rise and growth of Japan was crazy. Japan was undergoing an economic miracle. In a 40-year time span, Japan had gone from a small agricultural country to becoming the world's third largest economy. Japan was beating the US in tech, cars, and even video games. Japan's eventual suppressment of the US seemed inevitable. But of course, as we know, this didn't happen. The Japanese bubble burst, and Japan stagnated. And yet, you still continue to see Japanese influence in cyberpunk. But there's a country which I think fits the cyberpunk motif even better. Korea. It's always been a staple of cyberpunk media to feature massive, domineering corporations. Blade Runner has the Tyrell Corporation, Ready Player One has IOI, and Korea has Samsung. It's hard to overstate the impact that Samsung has on Korean society. Many think of Samsung as simply a technology company, but it is actually an incredibly diverse mega corporation. The Samsung Group has over 80 subsidiaries, the largest being Samsung Electronics, which makes everything you think of when you imagine Samsung. But there are of course a number of others, such as Samsung SDI, which is an energy company, Samsung SDS, which offers IT and consulting services, Samsung CNT, which is a construction company, Samsung Sports, which owns a variety of sports teams, Samsung Fire and Marine Insurance, which, you guessed it, offers fire and marine insurance, <laughs> Samsung Heavy Industries, which is the world's or second largest shipbuilder, and military Samsung weapons, come on, which is not shady whatsoever. These subsidiaries of the Samsung Group make up roughly 20% of the Korean economy, Whoa. which is absolutely absurd. This level of dominance over the country lacks any real comparison. It should come as no surprise that Samsung is also Korea's largest employer, employing 100,000 people across the country. Even the United States' largest employer, Walmart, makes up only 2.5% of the economy. The level of control Samsung has over Korea is insane. Just looking at it at a cultural level, if you were to ask a Korean primary schooler what they wanted to do when they grew up, more often than not, they'd say work at Samsung. Kids in Korea have it drilled into their brains that getting a job at Samsung is their key to a better and more prestigious life. This isn't an easy task, however. Children, even from an incredibly early age, know that if they want to work at Samsung, they'll have to do it very well in school and get into a prestigious university. Korean society places an incredible significance on education. School days are 11 hours of lecture-based instruction in a variety of subjects. What? And starting in middle school, more than 95% of students will begin to attend a privately owned full oh, Hold on, hold on. They go to school. Is this really the schedule for the entire day? Wow. Damn, schooling's intense there. Instruction in a variety of subjects. And starting in middle school, more than 95% of students will begin to attend a privately owned for-profit cram schools after they finish their regular school day. Overall, students may spend as much as 16 hours studying in a day, only coming home to sleep. There's a common saying in Korea that if you sleep 3 hours each night, you may get into a top university. If you sleep 4 hours each night, you may get into another university. But if you sleep 5 hours or more each night, especially during your last year of high school, forget about getting into any university. Even more so than other countries, getting into a top it's no surprise that they're going to experience one of the largest population collapses amongst any developed nation, even Japan. It's it's actually wild. Korea, South Korea's population collapse that's imminent is nuts. How are you supposed to forge strong familial incentives when your young people are basically wage cucks to a massive multinational corporation that's controlling 20% of your entire country? You don't think they have some influence? What time is there to date? What time is there to set down roots? What time is there to even have a wife? A husband, let alone kids. How can you afford anything in these cities? I'm sure all the big cities in South Korea are not cheap to live in. What is going on with the generational wealth in that country? Do kids even have any inheritance whatsoever of land, of property, houses, anything at all? Or have they become a renter economy as well? Top university in Korea is a big deal. And the only way to do that is by scoring highly on the Suning or CSAT exam. The Suning yeah. exam is a nine hour long all encompassing exam and is offered only once a year. During these nine hours, the country holds its breath. Teachers wear trainers to muffle their footsteps as they pace their classrooms. Roads around schools are shut down to prevent traffic for students arriving at test sites. 
Even planes are grounded all across the country, so the sound of them taking off is not a distraction to students. What? The pressure is immense. Oh my students God. study Korean, English, mathematics, and history, knowing that if they aren't happy with their result, they'll have to endure another year of grueling studying just to try again. For those who did poorly, well, they'll make up the 20% of students who will take it in a year. Some may even take it up to five times. What happened to the sound? For those who did well, their parents may reward them with plastic surgery. After all, a more attractive face will give them a leg up in the job market. This may seem insane to people in the West, but yes, this is true, and it's almost a cliche at this point. Of course, there are others who may never be able to find success with Sunik and will be forced to look for a different path. Some may abandon their dreams and work in manufacturing. There has to be a balance in society, man. I mean, work ethic of Asians in general is incredible, and they truly do bust their ass and expect especially families, they expect out of their kids absolutely everything and perfection plus more. Okay. The result of this is some of the most powerful and advanced nations in the world. They're doing well. They've progressed in a short amount of time and caught up with Western nations. They're highly advanced. If not, they're outpacing some of Western nations' top industries. Great. At what cost? All of the most advanced Asian nations, like for example, think Japan, South Korea, China big city China, not rural, all imminent population collapses, all major issues with marriage, replenishment rates are absolutely in the gutter. People can't afford to get married. Cost of living has spiraled out of control. They've advanced so much so fast that they don't have an answer to the problem that lies in front of them now. How do you replace bodies? How do you grow the population? And we've seen across multiple countries around the world, there's now incentives that are being put into place to make people to goad people into having more and more children, but still all proponents that are put forward have fallen short of their initial goals. The number one complaint people have around the world is cost of housing. I don't want a family in an apartment. There is no affordable housing for me to raise a family in. Income is a major issue. My wife also has to work. I don't want my wife to work. And then the money she earns is already cut in half or more by daycare in child services, or we're on a dual income already, and cost of living still is impossible. We're barely getting by with two incomes. Another one, my employer, maternity and paternity leave, probably non-existent in some countries. I know America, it's a clown show when it comes to paternity and maternity leave compared to some European nations. Don't know about paternity and maternity leave in Asia, but I would, I would guess they're not big on paternity leave there. Maternity leave, I don't even know. They look at them as worker bees, get your ass back to work. I don't know, man. We have to find a balance between modernization, capitalism, consumerism, the culture of corporations, our new governance of nation states that society has never seen before in terms of size and population. And we have to mix that in somehow with traditional values that's able to sustain population growth at a consistent level where society doesn't collapse. And eventually we end up going to war or something because of economic hardship, which it seems like if you look at the events in the world today, Another ground-based war is about to pop off, I believe, with Armenia and Azerbaijan, if not already. So economic instability leads to war. Always. Unfortunate. When the collapse begins to crunch down on the economics of a country to the point where it's affecting everybody, there will be a scapegoat created and politicians will point the fingers at some enemy instead of themselves. And that'll be the pretext to wipe everybody's collective memory of how we got here in the first place. Sound familiar? Hey, everyone. If you have a minute, please head over to legionofmen.store and grab yourself some cool merch as well. We have a bunch of limited edition designs, brand new stuff on the way, and all the proceeds go to supporting the channel. We don't want to be sponsored by corporations where we have to submit videos for review, have our speech impeded, or push any products that we don't use. So thank you so much to everybody that goes into the shop. Again, it's legionofmen.store. I'll put it up here for you guys. First time customers get a 10% off and we have a bunch of great designs by artists from the community that watch the channel and support. They get proceeds as well, a percentage of everything that gets sold. So community funded through and through. And it's no synthetic fibers aren't any on our products. We're using cotton only, of course. I got your back from all those chemicals from synthetic fibers. Again, appreciate you guys. Let's continue. While others may try to become professional gamers, spending all their free time practicing in internet cafes. Some may even try to become K-pop idols. But even in the entertainment industry, there still exists this extreme work culture. When someone auditions to become a K-pop idol, they sign what's called a slave contract, where they agree to let a management company 
control every facet of their lives for years. <laughs> it often takes years of incredibly intense training for a K-pop group to debut. Industry plans. In that time, trainees are constantly monitored, having to follow an extremely strict diet and are not allowed to be in a relationship. Trainees live together in dorms so they can be better monitored and aren't even allowed to leave without permission. At any point, even after years of intense training, the management company could drop the trainee with no financial compensation. This extreme work culture, which propelled Korea onto the world stage as a major economy, is also slowly just extreme overworking has caused a mental health epidemic, giving South Korea the highest suicide rate of any developed country in the world. There's one issue. Since the 1980s, Korean population growth has fallen below replacement level. As of 2020, Korean fertility rate was at 0.84 births per women, which not only puts them far below replacement level, but also is the lowest in the world. The population of Korea is already in decline and will continue to far into the future. This is only exacerbated by the country's compulsory military conscription, which forces all men in the country to serve in the army for at least two years. Well, all men in theory at least. Of course, like any other country, Korea has exceptions to its conscription, and those who are unfit to serve don't. And who decides who is fit to serve? Military brokers. In August of 2022, after serving 18 months in jail, Samsung Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong was officially pardoned for his heavy involvement in a bribery scheme with the previous Korean president Park Geun-hye, where Lee Jae-yong would offer over $38 million in bribes. Yoon suk yeol one of Park's successors after she was sent to jail, would then go on to pardon Jae-yong, citing his importance to Samsung and, by extension, the larger Korean economy. Hmm, too Korea big to fail, eh? Corruption. In fact, a very similar scandal happened years ago with Lee Jae-yong's father, Lee kun hye who, along with his many scandals, is credited for the transformation of Samsung into one of the world's largest businesses. It seems that anyone connected to these hyper-rich families can get away with anything. In fact, Korea has a word for these families, Chaebol. At the start of this video, I may have lied a bit. Korea doesn't just have Samsung as its corporate overlord. It also has three others, SK, Hyundai, and LG. These four Chaebol make up the majority of the Korean economy and account for half Gee. of all exports. Work at these companies is so in demand that in addition to demanding degrees from highly prestigious universities, they also have their own standardized entrance exams to recruit workers, of which hundreds of thousands of people take annually. The families that control these chaebol are near untouchable, and they are so spoiled that they'll launch an entire passenger plane just because you serve them their macadamia nuts in a bag rather than on a plate. The Korean government is a hostage to these companies. Wow. If any one of them were to fall, it's possible the entire Korean economy may collapse. Of course. The Korean government has little choice but to let these companies do as they please. See what happens when you become dependent on one giant multinational corporation or just a few of them? You see what happens when you don't have strong monopoly busting practices that are overseen by politicians? Well, how could you? Because... They've amassed so much power, they bought the politicians, they're become, thereby becomes a nasty feedback loop where they gain more and more power, embed themselves deeper, deeper into the economy and the culture as a whole, so they're impossible to get rid of now. What a shocker, dude! I've lived in South Korea for a decade, everything spoken here is true. I would add extremely invasive security apps and ubiquitous CCTV to the list of cyberpunk dystopian features. Also, as a hagwon... Teacher, it's heartbreaking seeing the effects of sleep deprivation firsthand daily. Students return home as late as 1 a.m. and still have homework to finish. Parents and academic institutions grind these kids' enthusiasm for life into absolute dust by their early teens. Perfectly said.